This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but I'll tell you more about them later. Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. So a short while ago, I taught my video editor, James, how to draw. He hadn't really drawn before, and then I thought it would be a nice opportunity to teach him how to draw from scratch, basically taking someone who had zero confidence with drawing and see if we could maybe just help them out a little bit. If you're interested in seeing James's progress, you can watch this video over here. And so from that video, James reached a point where he felt like he couldn't go any further. So we thought it would be useful if I jumped in from that point and just helped him push that drawing to the next level. Often we reach these little ceilings with skills and we can't really push through. So it's really nice to have an opportunity to reach that ceiling and then be shown practically the things that we could do to push through. At this point, we also just scanned the drawing because he was really proud of it. And I felt really scared about drawing on an artwork that he was really proud of. I was also just really proud of him. So I didn't want to ruin it. We immortalized that point and then took the opportunity to work over his artwork. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the darker tones, which I think are going to make the image pop a little bit more. So James already started with some really good dark tones there. And I was hoping that he'd carry that on. He did carry it on through here, which I think was fantastic. But let's just continue that work. I wanted to try and get this artwork to pop. And the best way to do that is to really get your rich dark values. I'm working really lightly with my cotton wool, my pencil and a brush because I know I'm going to want to pull highlights back out of this. Working carefully with the brush, I'm just shading in the larger values here. I know that I can always come in with a Tombow Mono Zero or my mechanical eraser and pull out some details. A little thing I'll do on the side here before I start working on the artwork with the mechanical eraser is I'll push the eraser into the paper and use it to get rid of any excess dirt on the eraser and also flatten the edge so I can get a sharper erasing line. I'm first going in with my Tombow Mono Zero eraser. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get the texture I want. So playing with the Tombow Mono Zero eraser or the kneadable eraser just gives me an idea of how the graphite is behaving and how to best get the texture I'm looking for. I'm a big fan of subtlety with, with detail and texture. So I'll often pull marks out and then I'll brush over them to soften them so that they aren't just a stark white detail, but rather layer them, which helps give them a sense of depth. One thing that was really interesting about this was the layering for me. It was where he takes the cotton wool and he slides it over a large area. I was so focused on getting really dark shadows and really bright highlights that I didn't really think about the mid-tone. And what I see he's doing here really brings it in a natural and smooth mid-tone that I wasn't expecting. I'm alternating between my Tombow Mono Zero eraser and my pencil to get the details, get the highlights, and then add the shadow below. This will help me work on the top end values and the lower end values and try and find a middle ground when I blend them together. A really helpful tip is to always try and keep some tissue paper under the palm of your hand so you don't smudge your work. I'm going back in with my 8B to try and get a little bit of depth in the dark values at the edge of this year. I'm using my Tombow Mono Zero to cut into some of those darker shades that I established with the brush earlier on. This is giving a nice detailed finish to the fur. And now we're just darkening around the eye, darkening around the forehead, trying to do this as softly as possible so that I know that I can still erase easily into it. I'm adding in some shadows here with the 8B just to try and distinguish some layers. And then I'm blending over with a blending sump so that the pencil strokes feel a little bit more hidden and a little bit softer. And now we're using the mechanical eraser in a way that I usually try to reserve it, which is to pull really strong highlights out of areas that are already saturated with graphite. So in this case, I'm putting some of her eyebrow hairs out of a really dark shadowed area. The secret here is to be confident with your marks. You have to commit to the mark you're making. If you second guess, especially with hair strands, it tends not to look accurate because it kind of breaks the, the flow of the hair. It looks like it's got a 90 degree angle or it could be a little bit crooked. So in this case, just confident strokes to try and get that hair strand, even if it isn't exactly the way that your reference is. James again. Uh, one thing about the mechanical eraser that I found was that I was really intimidated by it. And I think the point about confidence is a very valid one. Um, and I think the only way you gain that confidence is by practicing it and doing it a bunch of times. Because I hadn't practiced, practiced it, I felt really nervous about it and I didn't want to use it. So yeah, I think getting as much seat time with that mechanical eraser is essential. A lot of what I'm trying to do here is establish the tone. In this way, I'll be able to show where the main highlight is. I'll be able to show some shiny hairs with the quality of those highlights. And also, most importantly, I can show what's in shadow. If I do this really softly with a brush or with some cotton wool, then I also have the opportunity to just add some tiny little details that might not be in the reference image. But these details of little hairs can allude to it being furry. I'm cleaning up the edge of it with a kneadable eraser. This is helping me get a soft out of focus silhouette, which is just going to make it look even more furry. And now for one of the biggest opportunities to bring your drawings to life is in the eyes. I think James did a really, really good job and I don't actually have that much work here. 
all I'm doing is darkening some of the values. So I'm going in with my 8B pencil. I'm just getting a cleaner shadow and getting some cleaner highlights. This will just make those eyes look a little bit more glossy. Again, a really important thing is to have those tones. So I'm just going over with a brush on the left-hand side of the nose to really try and get that area into a consistent shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna be using a different tool here. I'm gonna be using a little makeup sponge, and this is to try and get really dark values in the nose. It's a little bit of a clumsy tool and it's quite powerful as well. So you can make marks here that are really hard to erase. So I would recommend using this very carefully. And now I'm just cleaning any excess graphite up with a bit of cotton wool. I'm doing this really softly so I can always pull the highlights back out. The highlights on the nose are really important here. So they both need to be bright, but also blurry. And that's quite a difficult medium to strike. So I'm doing trial by error. I think in this case, I might've gotten the value I wanted relatively quickly, but often in these scenarios, I'll try something, see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll see if I can try and erase and do it again. That's also why it's so important to work as gently as possible. So you can get a couple tries in to nail the texture. I wanted to try and darken the whole left hand side of Maya's head to really make the shape and the highlights on the right hand side pop out. In the reference image that James and I were using, we lit Maya from both sides, so there was a bit of reflected light on the other side. But this is one of those decisions that you can just make when you get a bit more confident to try and help artworks lend themselves to pencil drawing more. You want to really differentiate between your highlights and your shadows. Once I got into the swing of things, I was actually just repeating the same process everywhere. So I would get the tones that I want with my brush and some cotton wool, then I'd go in, get some details with the Tombow Mono Zero eraser, get those harsher highlights or hairs with the mechanical eraser. Every now and then I'd also go back in with a kneadable eraser. And this is just to get some softer textures. These are hairs that you don't necessarily see the individual hairs. It will just be a bit of a, a tone difference, which hints at lots of hairs clumped together. This is really helpful in just keeping areas from looking completely flat. And now onto the collar. This was really satisfying. James did an excellent job, but he also left a lot of really fun opportunities for me to make the collar pop out of it. So the first thing I want to do here is take the opportunity to darken the shadows and get some really distinct highlights. When you're trying to draw metal or any reflective smooth material, your highlights are the thing that's going to make it come to life. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm getting really nice shadows. This contrast is already going to make the highlights stand out. And then I'm also making sure that the shadow being cast from the buckle is very obvious. And this also just gives it volume and depth. I really want to try and distinguish the color from the hair. So I'm making a lot of effort to get this shadow that's being cast below the color as prominent as possible. One last time. I feel like what Jono is saying here about confidence is true of most of these, most of these techniques, which is you can sort of understand them and sort of get an idea of them, but really you can only really know them once you try them. So with the color, I was really, really nervous about it and about it looking genuine. So I leant more into that sort of low contrast neutral space when what I actually should have been doing is pushing those highlights and pushing down those, those shadows. So it really does come down to confidence, I think, most of these, most of these tips. At this point, I realized that there were actually some inaccuracies with how the color was drawn. So I'm going in with my mechanical eraser to restructure the color. It's important I use my mechanical eraser here because I need hard lines and I'm going into areas that have already saturated with graphite. So it's gonna be hard to pull this graphite back out unless I'm using this kind of eraser. Then I'm very gently going over with a brush to try and smooth over the erasing that I just did. I'm adding in the midtones with a brush as well. These tones are really important to make sure that when I do add the highlights, they're completely identifiable and they really pop. A tiny little detail that James missed here is the highlight on the inside of the hole of the buckle. This also just helps give it some depth and some value. And also just added a bunch of little highlights for the sewing of the collar. These highlights are super easy to do and they just add a whole lot of details. So the effort to reward ratio here is super high. And now I'm just smoothing over a bunch of the work with a blending stump and a brush. Cool. And now we're going back into the fur. I've already established how I'm going to be doing this. So pretty much the same method that I used at the rest of the drawing. Really soft application to get those dark values first and then going in with a mechanical eraser or my Tombow Mono Zero eraser to get the individual strands. So yeah, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's really subtle what I did. James did most of the hard work. So it was quite fun and easy to just bring this up a little bit to try and show a new level of drawing. Before in this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now and they've played a huge role in my career, not only in sponsoring this video and helping me maintain this channel, but more importantly, early on in my career, I was looking for a way to, to build a beautiful website. 
I didn't have time to learn HTML and how to put everything together. I was looking for a way to make it easy for collectors to find my work and get in touch with me. And I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them and set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive into working on James's drawing. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or things that I didn't quite cover as comprehensively in the video. I'd be happy to, to comment on those and try and help out. If you want more in-depth hands-on help with your works, you can head over to Patreon, join us there. There's a nice community going there and submit your artworks for critiques. It's always really wonderful seeing people's progress. Cool, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for the support and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.